For my final example, I will use a reaction that has recently appeared on the exam of one of my orgo students. For the starting material, I have a cyclobutane with an alkene coming off the ring. For my final product, I have a substituted cyclopentanol. So how did I go from a cyclobutane to a cyclopentane? And unfortunately, this type of question always catches students. Looking at it at first glance, I may not know the answer, but if I tackle this mechanism one step at a time, based on concepts that I know, I trust that I will come up with the right answer. There are two things I want to recognize before starting this reaction. The first is that anytime you're given water reacting in an acid catalyst, this means that we're using H3O plus in the reaction, or simply H plus, whichever you feel more comfortable with. The second thing I want to recognize is the ring strain and thus the instability of the cyclobutane. All the carbons in the ring are sp3, and that means they prefer to have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Instead, given that this is essentially a square, the bond angles are 90 degrees. This is so unstable that the cyclobutane will use any means possible to break open to get a more stable intermediate where the bond angles are greater than the confined 90 degrees. Taking that into account, Let's begin the mechanism. As with any alkene reaction, the pi bonds reach out and grab a hydrogen, collapsing the bonding electrons onto the oxygen. The hydrogen will add to the primary or Markovnikov position, giving me a secondary carbocation. Now this is where you really have to pay attention. I do have a hydrogen in a tertiary position, and a hydride shift would be expected. However, recall that the cyclobutane is looking for an excuse to open up. Therefore, instead of a hydride shift, I'm going to have an entire alkyl shift. I will choose to break this bond over here, and the electrons that initially formed this bond are going to jump over towards the carbocation, dragging the entire ring with it. Now this is the part where most students get confused because they instantly try to draw the product what they expect it to look like, but end up misplacing a piece or two. What I'm going to do instead is redraw the atoms exactly as I see them and worry about how it looks afterwards. Now this is how I see it. I have the methyl group attached to a carbon, the ring used to be here, and I have the protruding carbon group. I used to have a bond over here, but instead, I now have my bond right over here. The carbocation used to be on this position. However, with a new bond forming, I no longer have a deficiency. And in this position, where I used to have another bond, I now have a deficiency, which gives me the carbocation. And while the structure isn't exactly pretty, it shows the carbons exactly where they were, and it's easier for me to see where this thing came from. Now that I have a structure I can work with, I'll number the carbons and redraw based on the numbers rather than based on this mess that I see. I will only number the ring, so randomly going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Having a 5 carbon ring, numbered in the counterclockwise direction, I don't even need to look at this thing now to figure out what I have. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want you to get comfortable understanding how to go from one structure to the other without worrying too much about manipulating the structure. And here I have a 5-carbon ring, which I will randomly number in the counterclockwise direction so that it matches up with my initial structure. Now let's take a look. This is the most pain-free method you can use to go from an awkward structure to a structure that actually makes sense. Now let's continue. I have a carbocation in a secondary position directly near a tertiary carbon with a free hydrogen. Now I finally get to do my hydride shift, so I'll grab the hydrogen with its electrons and move it over to carbon number 5 to leave me with a deficiency and thus carbocation in position 1. Now that I have a carbocation in a tertiary position, the rest of the reaction can take place. 
and this will be the attack of the carbocation by a water molecule, followed by the removal of an extra hydrogen, which I will not show here, to give me a final product of a cyclopentane with one methyl group and then an alcohol on the same carbon as the second methyl group. What I want you to take out of this reaction is not so much the individual steps, because if your professor gives you something tricky, it won't necessarily look like this. But if you can tackle each step based on concepts you know and try to understand why each step happens the way it does, then you should have no problem tackling from the simplest to the most difficult mechanisms. For more information about organic chemistry reactions, join my mailing list at layofersci.com slash organic chemistry.